In response to the question from page 254, number 36, I'm going to do a few examples to help you do 36. Find the polynomial with integer coefficients that has the given zeros. So, let's take 37. There's three zeros. That polynomial has three answers. The original polynomial must have been a polynomial with exponent 3, or degree 3. Okay? So, let's work backwards. If 1 is an answer, the parenthesis before that step would have been x minus 1. If 5i was an answer, the parenthesis would have been x minus 5i. If negative 5i five five was an answer, the parenthesis would have been x minus a negative 5i. I'm going to rewrite this. x minus 1, x minus 5i, x plus 5i. Next step's pretty easy. All you have to do is multiply. But think first, stop a minute, look at the problem, and try and figure out what are the best parts to multiply first. The two parts that have an i in them, if you multiply those first, usually the i will end up disappearing out of the problem and will make the last step of multiplying easier for combining like terms. So I suggest you do the two i parts first. Let's get started. x times x, x squared, x times 5i plus 5i, negative 5i times x, oops, this is 5i, x, excuse me, negative 5i times x, negative 5i x, negative 5i times plus 5i is negative 25, squared. Now, before I do the next step of multiplying, I should combine like terms and simplify. Notice what happens. x squared is 5. 5ix minus 5x cancels out. 25i squared. Hopefully, you remember that i squared is negative 1. So, negative 25 times negative 1 is plus 25. So, simplify that. I still have to multiply by x minus 1. That part's so easy, I probably don't need to do it for you, but I will. x times x, x to the third, x times 25, 25x. 1 times x squared, negative 1x squared, negative 1 times 25, minus 25. That's the answer. Let's neaten it up a little bit. x to the third minus x squared plus 25x minus 25. There is the polynomial of degree 3. Answer to this problem. This polynomial of degree 3 could have a possibility of three answers. Now, one of the answers was a real number. Two of the answers are imaginary numbers. So if you graphed this on your graphing calculator, you would have noticed that the only place it crosses the x-axis is at the 1. It doesn't cross at these points because they're imaginary. All right, let's try one more. Here we go. Notice three parts, three answers. That means the original polynomial must have been of degree 3. Let's work backwards, see if we can get the answer. This one's easy, x minus 2. The next one, I'm going to use a square bracket, and hopefully you'll see why here. Okay, it looks like I'm running off the screen, so I'm going to move it over. Try again. x minus 2, square bracket, square bracket. All right, x minus the quantity 4 plus i, x minus the quantity 4 minus i. I used a parenthesis inside the bracket to avoid making a sign mistake. You have to be careful here. All right, the first parenthesis, not a problem, x minus 2. The next one, I'm going to convert it now just to a parenthesis, I will distribute that minus sign x minus 4 minus i. 
Next one. X minus 4 plus 5. There. Now I'm ready to multiply. Same as in the last problem. Be choosy when you start to multiply. All right? I should multiply the two imaginary parts first with the hope that some of the imaginary numbers will disappear. Let's see if that happens. So, let's keep the x minus 2. x times x. x squared. x times minus 4. Minus 4x. x times i. xi. Negative 4 times x. Negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 4 plus 16. Negative 4 times i minus 4i. Negative i times x, I'm going to put these down below. Negative xi. Negative i times negative 4, positive 4i. Negative i times positive i, negative i squared. Okay. I need to find like terms and simplify that a little bit. So, we're going to keep our x minus 2. Next part, there's only one squared term, we're going to keep that. Negative 4x, are there any other x terms? There's another one, negative 4x, add those, negative 8x. All right. Plus xi, minus xi. That cancels out. Plus 4i, minus 4i. That cancels out. Negative i squared. That becomes a plus 1. A plus 16 and a plus 1, plus 17. Okay. Now, one more multiplying step. x times x squared, x to the third. x times negative 8x, negative 8x squared, x times 17, plus 17x. Negative 2 times x, negative 2x squared, negative 2 times negative 8, positive 16x. Negative 2 times 17, negative 34, there. That's the answer. I should simplify it. So let's erase this stuff up here, and I'll write the simplified answer. It is x to the third. Two like terms here. How about negative 10x squared? Two like terms here. How about plus 32, 33x minus 34. Final answer. Third degree, starting with three answers. If there's four answers, fourth degree. You'll have a fourth degree exponent at the beginning of the problem when you're done, hopefully, if you do your multiplying right. Now, the other thing to be careful of is integer coefficients. If you get a problem and there are not integer coefficients, if there's a fraction anywhere, let it equal zero, first of all, and then multiply to clear a fraction. So if you had a fraction with a three in the bottom, you'd multiply the whole problem by three so you have no fractions. The answers have to be integer coefficient, coefficients, so that's it. Good luck with your homework.